Welcome to this edition of Premiere Pro Quick Tips, where you learn to be a more creative video editor. In this episode, you'll learn how to take inverted video and display it properly in your source monitor. Sometimes you have to turn your camera upside down to video certain scenes. Some cameras have a setting that allow you to tell it that the camera is inverted so that the saved footage is in its proper orientation. Some cameras do this automatically and some cameras like the GoPro you have to set ahead of time. And some cameras have no such setting. For instance, I primarily use a Canon G7X Mark II. While it has an articulating screen that flips out when the camera is upside down, the video on that display is in the proper orientation. However, the saved video is upside down or inverted. Why would the camera need to be upside down? Well, if you look at this particular camera, it's mounted on my windshield with a suction cup. And it has to be upside down so that I can flip the screen out and see what I'm videoing. And if you notice, the screen is in the proper orientation. Sometimes I even put the camera up on the moonroof to get a side angle view and it's the same situation upside down camera right side up display monitor but inverted saved video now the problem arises when you take this video and put it into the source monitor for editing for example if i take this inverted video in my project panel and drag it to the source monitor it's upside down there's not much i can do as far as making it uh, right side up and if I want to create multiple in and out points, especially if those points are based on some visual clue in the clip, it is a royal pain to select those. And especially if you're doing multiple in and outs, it becomes very tedious. What a lot of beginners will do when they encounter this is they'll just take the video and drag it straight down to the timeline. So let me close this. They'll take the video clip, take it down to the timeline, and then apply an effect to rotate it. 180. And now it's rotated. But the problem now exists similar to when you were working with upside down video is when you start to do multiple in and out points. So if you scrub to a point that you want to start, there's an in, you scrub to the out point, and you just want to keep this part. So now you have to go into the cut tool, cut that, cut that, go back to the pointer tool, click here and ripple delete, and then go and create more in and out points if needed and scrub to where you want an out point, go to your cut tool, cut and cut, go back to the pointer tool, Take this, ripple delete that, and then ripple delete that. As you can tell, that can become tedious with multiple in and out points. What I'm going to show you is the way I do this, and there could be, and there probably is, dozens of other ways to do this, but this is just the way I, I do my workflow when I have inverted video. I'll take the inverted video. I'll create a bin called inverted because I like to keep just what's in my top level of the project, just videos that I have in my sequence. So now I go to my inverted folder, I take the inverted video, I copy it to the timeline, I will create the effect rotation effect of 180 degrees. It rotates it. Now I come to the sequence over here. I'll rename this SEQ dash and then the name. That way, and that's just my naming convention so I know what sequences are and what file they were made from. Now I can close this sequence here and I like to keep what I have in my master timeline, uh, all those clips up in the top level of my folder. So I'm going to just cut this from this folder, go back up to the top level and paste it in. 
So as you can see, I have my in inverted videos. There could be multiple inverted videos, and, and there normally are uh, in my workflows. I have them tucked away in the inverted bin so they don't clutter my top level folder. Again, everything that's in my top level folders is basically what's gonna be in my timeline for the most part. So now that you see the sequence that we just created, it uh, can be treated as if it was a piece of raw footage, meaning I can take it, I can copy it to the source monitor, and now I can scrub very intuitively with some in and out points, drag this to my timeline, find another in point, and one more out point, drag that to my timeline, and I have a sequence that's right side up, a source monitor that's right side up. Now I had mentioned uh, my master sequence, so I like to uh, name my master sequence as master sequence. So let's find the actual file. I come in here and I'll just call this master sequence. Again, these are just my little workflow habits that I do. And so now I have a sequence here to which I can add other clips, other you know titles, uh, adjustment layers, so on and so forth. Because these these clips on the time on the sequence are treated as if they were they came from raw footage. In other words, I can uh, apply individual effects to these clips. I can even apply transitions and so on and so forth. So that's it. A quick and easy way to view your inverted files in the source monitor for easier editing. If you enjoyed this quick tip, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know when I upload other quick tips, please hit the subscribe button somewhere on this page. Thank you for watching. Until next time, be creative.